It's Thursday, March 25th, and you're listening to the Geek at Geek News Central, the longest continuous running tech podcast. This is show number 846, sponsored in part by GoDaddy.com. Our March GoDaddy special, get GoDaddy hosting for $1 per month using the promo code HOST. Deal too. Geek News Central is also sponsored in part by DYNDine.com. Save 30% using promo code PODCAST30. Hey everyone, it's great to be back here in the studio, back in Honolulu. Got a great show lined up for you today. Unix comes next. Strap in. Here it comes. All right, people, I need a go no go for the Geek News Central podcast. Digital archive recorders. We're go fly. Microphone. We're go fly. Video feed. Go. Web browser. Go. RSS data stream aggregator. Go fly. Interflux totism suppressor. All right. I'm confused. Host readiness check. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. The Geek News Central podcast is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are ready to go. Q Todd in five. Button, button, who's got the button? Four. There is no cause for alarm. Three. Everybody hold on to something. Two. Just press the button. One. It's showtime. Aloha and welcome to Geek News Central coming to as live as it can be from the beautiful state of Hawaii via the Geek News Central Studio overlooking Greater Honolulu. Hey everyone, welcome to the show. So, hey, I'm glad to be back in uh, in Hawaii. My brain doesn't quite know which time zone it's in. I think it's trying to decide East Coast, West Coast, Hawaii, <laughs> or wherever. But uh, it's been a kind of an interesting couple of days adjusting after I had a pretty hard week adjusting to get on Eastern Standard Time. But uh, back here in Hawaii, I want to give a warm welcome to all of the Ohana, all of the longtime listeners, family members of the show. Listeners and viewers of the show, thanks for being here. Thanks for staying subscribed. And, of course, uh, I want to give you just a, a big shout-out and say, hey, thanks thanks for being here. And uh, got a great show lined up for you tonight. Lots to cover, lots to share. And we got a few things to go over to in the beginning. But those of you that are new, welcome to the show. Uh, I produce this every Monday and Thursday night with a Tuesday and Friday morning release. So that way you can set your clocks, too, on when this show is going to come out. And uh, we're doing something new. We've changed up uh, what was a Saturday morning tech show. We'll talk about a name change and the philosophy behind that here in, in just a few minutes. But um, make sure you get over to geeknewcentral.com. If, if you're new to the show, we want to encourage you to get over there and definitely check the website out. And uh, definitely uh, get into the second column of the website. That way you can subscribe to the show there via iTunes or an RSS feed. You can get uh, signed up for the newsletter as well. There's a newsletter link at the top of the page. That will get you basically direct access to everything I cover during this show. And what I will do is immediately following the show, we'll send out a new, a, basically an email blast containing all the links to um, all of the uh, content that I'm going to cover tonight. Of course, all of the show notes, all the lengthy uh, links to every article that I'm going to cover is going to be at gncshownotes.com. Uh, we don't put them on the main page of Geek News Central due to uh, Google basically uh, not liking when you have uh, 30 links with very short text, one after the other hyperlinks. So uh, all those are over at gncshownotes.com. You can always reach out to me here at the show. It's real easy to do so via Twitter at Geek News is the uh, email address. And, of course, you can email me here, email address, the Twitter address, and the Geek News at gmail.com is the email address that you can use to, uh, to hook up with me and send your comments in about the show. And then, of course, the show hotline at 619-342-7365. Trying to make an adjustment here. My uh, earphones keep riding up on me, which keeps uh, my my glasses <laughs> feeling like they're crossways. That's kind of a weird feeling when they're you know they're not sitting square in your head. So um, don't forget you can watch the show on the Tech Podcast channel on the Roku, Boxy, Samsung Smart TV, Google TV. So that's available there for you to, uh, to get connected with um, if, you, if you miss the live show. And of course, we do stream live. We're up on the live stream. We're up on Ustream. We're up on the uh, ad-free version of the show at uh, geeknewcentral.com and live.geeknewcentral.com as well. So uh, anyway, lots of places to catch the show live. And we start about 8 p.m. Hawaiian Standard Time, which is 2 o'clock in the morning on the East Coast and uh, 11 p.m. Pacific Time. So many of you are fast asleep and uh, 
having uh, nice, gentle dreams at this point, but uh, uh, six hours behind the East Coast we are here in Honolulu. Okay, so, hey, um, don't forget, uh, this show is part of the Tech Podcast Network over at techpodcast.com. Lots of great shows over there. Matter of fact, just about a week ago, um, we added a number of new shows to the network. Um, I think we had nearly 20 that basically made it through our selection process. And uh, so I'm really excited, all the new shows over there. And I think, what is the total count? Let me take a quick look. There's about 130 total shows at Geek News Central. So definitely uh, get over to uh, Tech Podcast. Did I say Geek News Central? Over at techpodcast.com. And, uh, and check out all the great shows over there. And the one that's right up now there being featured is the Authority to Podcast by Daniel Lewis. So uh, he's one, he does a great show um, over there. So I did want to take just a second here. We want to thank our good friends at, at GoDaddy um, for sponsoring the show. But I got a quick message from our good friend, Danica Patrick. Hi, this oh, is Danica Patrick. Oh, I guess Please. not. You know what happens when, uh, let me, those of you watching the video, Look what I'm holding up here. A plug. <laughs> oh, did that hurt your ears? I apologize. So now we should be able to hear Danica. Hi, this is Danica Patrick. Barely. Star and GoDaddy Girl. I rely on my race team to make my cars lean and mean. Oh, my gosh. That's what happens when the geek isn't geeky enough and doesn't have everything plugged in right. I just blew out everyone's eardrum, so I have to go back and edit that. Uh, my apologies. So I guess we won't hear Danica tonight. What happens is if I don't get that in the jack and I don't get it right, you hear that pop, 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 pop at the beginning. That's a, that's a, that's a rookie move there, and I apologize for that. But uh, if we could have heard Danica, she would have said that uh, the geek here at Geek News Central does all his business at, at GoDaddy.com. And Wow. A phone that's not supposed to ring rings. So we're batting a thousand. Um, well, let's just talk a little bit about the um, offers we've got for you this month, and we've got we've got some great ones over at GoDaddy. So what I've got is I've got a dollar per month hosting, and this is economy hosting. This is a great deal where for twelve months you're going to get uh, basically for twelve bucks you're going to get your business or your website launched by using the promo code Host Deal Two. And uh, I also think that there's also a sub offer with this where you can get a domain name as well. We've also got 35% off your order by using promo code go 35 off five. So go 35 off five for 35% off your order. These uh, codes are going to drop dead here at the end of the month. Um, you can find all of the codes for Geek New Central's um, offers with GoDaddy at geeknewcentral.com forward slash GoDaddy. The 295.com is still uh, in play by using the promo code GEEK295. And uh, I got pretty lucky because um, we, uh, on the Saturday morning tech show, when Rob and I got done with the last show, I kind of raised a, a, a little business discussion. I told Rob, I said, you know, we've been focusing um, pretty much every week on the new media space. We, we talk about podcasting a lot. We've had folks from The Verge, we've had Slate, we've had Cairo Radio. You know, we've just had this full line of great uh, new media folks on, and we spent a lot of time talking about the space. Why don't we, uh, why don't we change the show name? And uh, Rob and I made an executive decision um, on the show to change uh, what was the morning tech or Saturday morning tech show um, we've renamed it. We're working on the rebranding for the update, the album art, but the show's now from henceforth going to be known as the new media show. And, um, I'm really excited with kind of the new direction. We can still talk about some techie stuff as it relates to the space when we need to, but, um, Rob and I are going to work to have great guests on every week to have involvement in the new media space. Uh, this past week, we had the gadget professor, Don Bain, on. And Don has, those of you that don't know, but Don uh, runs multimedia communications out of uh, Scottsdale, Arizona. Um, not only being a, a TriCaster dealer, they also have a full line of media products and media services. And he works with a lot of small and big businesses. So we were talking with him 
um, in great detail about um, basically his business and what's going on with it on the space. But being that we had switched the name to the new media show, I went over to GoDaddy and did a search for new media show. And I just about fell over because the domain name was available. Um, I was literally shocked. Um, couldn't believe that it was actually available. Ordered it immediately. Uh, used my com sale promo code and was able or to get, because I'd already used the Geek295 code, and I got a, a .com for, you know, for basically eight bucks and uh, using one of my own promo codes. So you never know if you've, if you've got a domain name or domain names already and you want to renew them. Uh, ComSale2 is a, a great promo code for, for renewals. Uh, excuse me, ComSale3 is the renewal code. And then just a whole host and bevy of codes at geekingcentral.com forward slash GoDaddy for you to... Uh, to explore and find your biggest discount. So we do want to thank GoDaddy for being a sponsor here. But, you know, that kind of leads, you know, cat out of the bag here a little bit on what we decided um, between Rob and I. But, I'm, I, you know, so far I've gotten some great feedback from a number of content creators. Um, everyone thinks that the thought that the show had kind of drifted from being completely tech. Uh, we're still going to have to tech stuff because we're going to have to fill we're not going to be able to do like we did two hours on the last show um so you know that's a lot of time to talk some three people and in, in covering a variety of content and uh, so it all kind of was interrelated and, and worked out well so um definitely you're going to want to and i'm going to tell you i think what's going to end up happening is i've always wanted an outlet to really talk more about the space and I always thought that maybe um, doing a, a show where I would um, really like the 24-hour podcast took so much out of me that maybe this new new focus with the new media show is going to help uh, every Saturday or Sunday for us being able to put out content. And, and we're going to expand. We're going to talk about gear. We're going to talk about services. Um, so it's not going to be limited to uh, just talking with podcasters. So I think you're going to be excited with what it's uh what it's all about kind of a new direction for me too. turned over the reins to the reins to the chrome show this morning to uh um our new our new guest our new host and uh we look forward to uh to having uh seeing the first shows coming out there so we'll be uh featuring that here in a couple of weeks when his first new episode comes out and uh, excited to see that uh, see that happening here. So let's uh, look at my little short list of stuff today. Um, I got back from uh, Indianapolis uh, Saturday afternoon late. Uh, we arrived home, and uh, it was a cloudy, rainy day here. First thing I want to do is I want to take a shower because you know you just got like eighteen hours worth of grime on you from sitting in an airplane and. Uh, when we're when the sun's shining, we don't have to turn on electricity to the hot water heater because it's already warmed up. But because it had been a cloudy day all day, the temperature was like at like 90 or something like that. So I said, oh, come on, I'm going to go ahead and, you know, turn the power on, get the heat up above 110, 115 degrees. So at least I'd have a nice hot shower. And usually it takes about 10 minutes to bring the temperature up. And I walked in there and it wasn't moving. <laughs> and... uh kind of looked around and noticed a little water on the floor. And I said, this is not good. There's not supposed to be water in and around a hot water heater. Um, did some investigation, got my meter out and checked power. And yeah, everything was working good. And then there's a little cover you can take off on the front of the uh, um, hot water heater. Solar hot water heater, I guess, is probably pretty much the same from an electricity standpoint as a regular hot water heater is. But pulled a little cover off. And actually, where the wires come in and there's a little circuit breaker and the thermostat, um, there was water there. And that is like, <gasps> you know, I'm like immediately like, oh, stop, time out. And um, threw the breakers at, on the main junction box and went in and, and dried the area out. So what has been going on for really the last uh, couple of days now is uh, we turn the hot water heater on when we need to, because it'll work, barely. But there's still a leak somewhere, and it's it's got to be replaced. Uh, you can see the corrosion inside, and uh, you know it's ten years on that particular water heater, maybe twelve. So it's it's done its job, and it's time to uh, uh, be replaced. And uh, actually, we're actually having um, we're thinking about replacing our, our entire solar system 
it wasn't hasn't been performing the way it needs to. So um, from a solar hot water standpoint, we'll probably be having a new system put in in the, in the next few days. But um, time will tell um, how this is going to turn out. But uh, needless to say, not a fun thing to come home to. At least it waited to, to poop out until I got uh, back. The Delta flight home wasn't uh, too bad. Um, stewardesses were nice. I guess that was the only consolation. And uh, so it was, it was pretty good. I was able to uh, make it home and uh, with really no issues. And uh, they took care of me pretty good. So enjoyed the the flight back. Um, you know, one thing my wife and I've been talking about, and for, up to this point, my wife has only done part-time jobs ever since uh, we lived here in Hawaii. Actually, since we've been married, uh, she's worked part-time at the school. And we were talking quite a little bit about, uh, you know, she's trying to figure out, okay, it's time for a change. What am I going to do? So I think we're actually going to uh, enroll her in a uh, realtor class. I think based on her tenacity to kind of dig in and find stuff and dig, you know, just do a great amount of research that she'd make a great realtor. And, and so uh, she's going to be uh, starting to do some um, realtor studies so she can get a realtor's license. And uh, as she says it, uh, you know, have a have a semi real job that's flexible where she can still, you know, do things at the school, volunteer work, and then basically be a realtor on the side. So i um, excited for her to kind of start a new chapter of uh, things going on. But uh, all's well here. Can't complain. And uh, we're going to get into the content here. Those of you that are new to the show, hey, we just kind of spent some time at the beginning just chatting and catching everybody up, and then we get into the tech. That's how we roll here. And makes us a little different than uh, the rest of the shows. I do want to share with you guys one thing. I shared this on Saturday, but we made a a, a rollout, um, and basically uh, we've rebranded and we've relaunched Blueberry.com. And this is our site that um, when you first came to the website before, you would essentially see um, this page or basically content creators being featured. And we made a decision to make a change where we did a lot more focus on those creating content. So we've got a whole section of the website now that is specifically, I mean, it's it's 100% dedicated to people that create media. We've got a, a complete podcasting manual. We've got our support options, the services that we uh, um, provide and some of the things that we do that's unique as a company. And then on the other side, we still have the ability for the listening audience to go in and explore and find content and find videos and and different kinds of content and we're we're going to be making some more changes on the um i guess the the public side of the website where folks can come in and find media we'll be talking about more about that in the coming days but um this is a big change for us and a big 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 update and i'm excited with the new look we received a lot of uh, comments positive comments so far um, if any indications that we've made a good change, sales are up. Um, you just in the short amount of time that we've changed the site, I think we've made a better, uh, done a better job of, of marketing what we have available as, as products and services. So I'm pretty excited about this new change that we made over there and, and uh, look forward to uh, basically making some more announcements as the year progresses and we're ready to do so. Um, I guess last bit a bit here before we get into the uh, the full content of the show tonight, and we take care of one more sponsor message, and then we'll get uh, we'll get in deep with the uh, with the tech content because I do have a lot of stuff to cover tonight. You know, when my team can get together and work together, it's it's really amazing um, what we can get accomplished. You know, project that takes weeks, decision that takes days are done right then and there. Uh, but gathering everyone together from different locations can be time consuming and we don't do it very often and it's expensive and sometimes it's just impossible. So that's why uh, we use GoToMeeting with HD Faces. It makes it easy for our team to get together online. Uh, really, we do this whenever we need to uh, and it doesn't matter how far people are away. And, you know, this is something that works great for teams that are for companies that are building digital teams. Um, you know, and I can stay logged into a GoToMeeting session all day and people can jump in and out of the session as they need. And, you know, with GoToMeeting, you share the same screen, screen, so you stay on the same page. And the built-in HD video conferencing makes your online meetings 
um, feel like they just like everyone's all in the same room. And plus, it's simple to launch or join a meeting from anywhere uh, using your computer, smartphone, or tablet. To even uh, basically, even present from your iPad. So I love GoToMeeting, and I want you to to give it a try as well. So try GoToMeeting free for 30 days. Don't wait for this special offer. Visit GoToMeeting.com. Click on the Try It Free button and use the promo code podcast. Now, when you click on the Try It Free button, that there's you don't see a place to put the promo code anymore, but you have to click the little promo code uh, window and it'll open up. You'll be able to enter the, the code podcast. Remember the promo code podcast. That gets us credit, and we know that you're going to love GoToMeeting as much as I love the love GoToMeeting. Now, tonight, um, this afternoon, I received an interesting email. Uh, it's just like, you know, you go years in working on different clients and different things. And it's like, all of a sudden it's just, you know, those friction of those, it's just been a very interesting and very positive uh, spring uh, from a business perspective. And I'm very, very appreciative um, of that. Now I did want to take just a second before, again, before we get into content, I, I do want to say that we've had an uptick in the number of folks that are supporting the show financially. And it is really appreciated. Um, you know, I made a couple of appeals on um, earlier shows to to really, you know, hopefully we can get more folks that are going to come in and, and support the show as a, as a Geeking Central insider. And that has be really um, we've seen we've seen some some movement there. And um, I want to thank those of you that have come on as as insiders. Um, we've had a, a number of folks that come in at the two dollar a month. $5 a month, $10 a month, and even one that has come in at a, at a $25 a month level that are really new within about the last week or so. And we make it real easy for you if you decide you want to support the show that way. Um, all you got to do is go over to geekingcentral.com forward slash insider, and we got the ability for you to do really a, a, a number of options. Or if you don't want to go on a monthly plan, there's ability at the bottom to just do a single um one-time donation to the show, and we appreciate folks that do that as well. It really helps out. The goal ultimately is to continue to build the show, and I know times are tight for a lot of people, but at the $2 plan, I think you're like six and a half cents a day uh, to support the show uh, financially, and, and we appreciate those folks that do that, that come in at uh, the two, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five dollar a month level, and uh, it really, it would really appreciate it. So thanks so much. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this you know, the stack here. I've spent quite a bit of, wow, I've spent a lot of time on that tonight, way too much. And um, I got a lot to get through. So first article up tonight is about Reddit. Um, specifically, the Reddit co-founder calls out fellow geeks for ostracizing sexist behavior. And, you know, I'll be honest with you. I have uh, had the pleasure you know, doing, uh, serving 25 years in the Navy. I uh, have now, you know, worked with my team at, at Raw Voice um, since uh, 2005. I have uh, had the ability to work daily with a large number of folks, uh, male, female, um, different uh, ethnic persuasions. And I'll be honest with you, I just don't get it why geeks are basically making these um, these sexist type of comments in a variety of different forums. And it shocks me, too, that this, you know, it's kind of like the kettle calling, the kettle, well, what is that saying? It's like calling the kettle black or something. But, you know, Reddit has got some pretty disgusting stuff in its forums as well. So here, you know, I find it interesting that this guy is um, talking about... Um, people that are making uh, sexual jokes, uh, making uh, inappropriate comments at, at forums and so forth, yet, you know, he's he's calling these people out, uh, yet he allows Reddit to contain some of the stuff it contains, and it just kind of is like, really? You're going to criticize when you don't follow through with that in your own business and it, you don't uh, run a clean ship? So, you know, it, it's like talking out of, both sides of the mouth, right? And um, it, it's an interesting, um, it's an interesting response. And um, you know, I think we all 
um, want to have free speech. But at the same time, um, you know, technology comes down to how we use it. And, um, but, you know, this, this guy occupies an infill position and, you know, and he's got a site that has diverse groups that have some pretty extreme responses and, but it's kind of a, it's, it's like, really? So I, I just, just kind of thought this was weird coming from this particular individual, but, uh, uh, time will, will tell on how the public uh, feels about his comments. So I did, and this is a really kind of a summing back to a topic we had on, on the last show talking about um, the uh, the situation that happened with Adrian Richards. And I haven't had a chance to talk with Jeffrey Powers, who's a lot uh, closer friends with her than I am, but uh, I know that it's disturbed him quite a bit, the things that happened. Uh, during that event and, you know, resulted in both of them getting uh, fired from their jobs. Moving into more fun type of news, broadcast TV ratings are falling, advertising are eyeing cable and web video, which is pretty cool. Uh, this is an uh, article that's over on, on The Verge. And uh, one thing I do want to say is uh, I should bring up is I got a e- or actually got a comment on the last uh, podcast where Someone that's watching the show says, Todd, how come you're not looking up at us very much? <laughs> and let me kind of explain what happens. And, you know, this show, there's no teleprompter. It's not scripted. Um, I largely go off of the content that's on uh, a variety of different websites. Um, for me to be able to really memorize and talk to these articles really deeply, I, you know, it would take me uh, five hours to have studied the content in each article, really down to the brass tacks. So when I, you know, when I talk about stuff, and when, especially those of you who are watching the video, and I'm, I'm not watching you, it looks like I'm watching down, it's because I am, it's because I'm kind of paraphrasing and going through uh, the tech article. So I know it can be annoying that I don't look up. So I'm going to make it a conscious, <laughs> a conscious um, effort to try to look up at you in the camera more. And uh, you know, I don't have the uh, the luxury of having everything perfectly placed for eyeballs. The you know the studio just doesn't uh, uh, support it. Um, and of course, and again, no green screen going on here. Um, and I mean, no, uh, no uh, teleprompter. And, and, and basically, if you can see right from, let me see if I can show you the right angle here. You know, I'm doing all the control stuff too, uh, running the lower thirds, uh, switching stuff in and out, turning it on, you know, rolling stuff back in, back and forth. I and mean, that takes a little conscious effort too. And not all, especially traveling a lot, my eye hand coordination always isn't perfect. So I just wanted to address that one viewer that was worried about me always looking at them. So what I'm going to try to do is on the video, we'll try to bring up the actual article more so that you get that as eye candy as I'm going through. But going back to this article that's on The Verge, is broadcast TV ratings fall and advertising on cable and web video. Um, it's obvious that broadcast TV is, is you know, entering a, a rough season here. And so all four major networks saw a drop in viewers in the 18 to 49 demographic in the group that's really the most prized by advertisers. Uh, Fox saw show ratings for this group decline 23, 23% through March. ABC ratings declined 8%, NBC's by 7%, and CBS by 3% as audience tune out a broadcast. Now, what do you think, that? why they're doing that? Well, I think it's because uh, people are on Netflix, they're on HBO Go, they're on Hulu, they're on a variety of other, you know, services, and they are not watching as much TV. I know here at my household, the TV rarely comes on uh, Monday through Friday, and the kids are always doing, now it's been on a little bit more this week because they've been on spring break, they go back to school on Wednesday. Uh, Hawaii has more holidays than any other state, I think, in the country. They have all these, they have a holiday tomorrow, and then they have another holiday. Well, they're actually taking, they took Good Friday off, which I don't know if that's normal in most states or not, but uh, the state workers get off on Friday for Good Friday. So it's kind of, you know, it's kind of weird, all these, you know, almost two weeks of spring break 
Um, it's just probably one of the reasons why the school systems in Hawaii suck as bad as bad as they do. So moving on to a little space news here. This exciting SpaceX Dragon capsules is scheduled to return to Earth tomorrow. So the private cargo capsule is returning, and uh, you can watch its orbital departure live online. So SpaceX unmanned Dragon spacecraft is slated to depart the orbiting lab at 6.56 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Um, and perform a series of burns and then splash down around 12.34 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time in the Pacific Ocean, 246 kilometers off the Baja, California. So um, pretty cool. There's going to have NASA TV stuff. But uh, Dragon is wrapping up its second contracted cargo run, the space station. And, of course, we, as you remember, the capsule launched on March 1st and arrived at the orbiting lab two days later. So you think about it. They've been on, uh, hasn't been at the station very long. So the capsule uh, delivered about 1,200 pounds of supplies and will return, now check this out, a lot more. <laughs> uh, 2,760 pounds of equipment, hardware, and scientific experiments. So uh, packed among the returning cargo is a batch of Lego toys that have been in the space station uh, for the last two years. So, um, and really, Dragon, of course, is the only operating cargo uh, vessel that can, re uh, can return supplies to Earth. Other robotic supply vehicles such as Japan's HTV, Europe's ATV, and Russia's Progress spacecraft burn up upon re-entry. So, um, of course, uh, California SpaceX holds a $1.6 billion NASA contract, and they're basically slated to fly 12 flights. And uh, I think they're supposed to make another one here in a couple of months. So uh, they'll have a quick turnaround. And I think they're reusing the uh, spacecraft which is uh kind of cool so uh we'll see how spacex does tomorrow in their their execution all right switching gears just a little bit here um digital trends is reporting that uh, amazon has been contracted with a 600 million deal to build a cloud computing system for a government agency according to a recently published report at federal computer week a website that breaks down the business of fed news um amazon purportedly has got a contract with the CIA that will have the company working for the intelligence agency for more than 10 years. And it's, it looks like Amazon Web Services. So it looks like they're going to be building a, uh, a data center for them. Um, that's kind of an interesting move here, yeah? So, uh, of course, the agency is not talking about it. And uh, but interesting that the Amazon has got themselves a government contract, but um, the uh, some folks at um, the Government Accountability Office (GAO) is basically saying we don't know anything about this. So, uh, but apparently it's being reported that's what happened. So, uh, Amazon got themselves a serious contract with uh, uh, one of the biggest uh, agencies, one of the most uh, privately information held agencies in the uh, on the face of the earth so I'll be kind of curious to see where this leads and what else news leaks on that okay NB, NBC is warning now hey listen up NBC Universal is warning file sharers of criminal prosecution NBC Universal is one of the copyright holders involved in the six strikes copyright alert system with the warnings being sent out to subscribers now, basically they are at this point saying, okay, we are now going to um, opt in on the option that basically says we can come after you. Um, NBC is taking a different approach in the notices that fall outside the scope of the copyright alert system. So, the a bit torrent user received a, a note a few days ago for allegedly downloading a TV show. In the first paragraph of the actual uh, takedown, it says this notice provides you with the information you need in order to take immediate action that can prevent serious legal and other consequences. Um, NBC Universal makes a threat of legal action more concrete by stating that the infringers risk massive fines and even criminal prosecution. Again, this appears to induce fear more than educating the recipient. 
Um, part of the note that's been sent to this BitTorrent user was said the illegal downloading and distribution of copyrighted works are serious offenses that carry with them the risk of substantial monetary damage and, in some cases, criminal prosecution. Um, and they go on to say, in the same warning to this BitTorrent user, and this, again, this is not about education. This is a warning on six strikes. Copyright infringement also violates your internet service provider's terms of service and could lead to limitation or suspension of your service. So um, this is crazy. Um, I guess they're not uh, following along with six strikes. And... Um, the folks at Torrent Frank contacted MPAA for a comment on the different approaches of their member companies outside the copyright alert system. They have not re uh, basically responded. The full notice NB Universal sent out is, is basically in this article, and uh, they are uh, they're using a little different tact. So don't worry. Six strike doesn't cover you for everything. They're going to get you both ways, so be careful out there, okay? Especially downloading stuff that could be uh, linked back to you that was from NBC Universal. They're taking a much harder, harder stance. Now, I'll ride along with that article. Let me point out to you guys free access to dozens of anonymous VPNs via a new university project. So, as citizens around the world endure censorship of all types, a Japanese university has stepped in to level the playing field. Whether you're in Iran, China, and blocked from YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, or in the UK, desperate to get back to the Pirate Bay, KAT, or H33T, a new, a new tool from researchers give instant access to dozens of VPN services. Not only is the system simple to use, but it's also completely free. So, um... This is kind of cool. So now here's how this thing works. Volunteers are given the university access to dozens of VPN servers located all over the world, which people can access from pretty much any device running Windows, Linux, iOS, Android, and more. No sign-up or user registration is needed. Once connected, the user's IP address is hidden and switch from one issued by the VPN of their choice uh, and and is switched for one issued by the VPN of their choice, selected from dozens around the world. Um, several protocols are in, accepted, such as L2, L2TP, IPSec, SSTP, and, and the um, popular OpenVPN. But um, the beauty is this, they've got a little client that runs. So um, you can unblock sites, you can do some tests. Um, everything looks pretty good on this. So... Um, now, here's, here's something to think about. If a U.S. citizen carried out file sharing on a U.S. VPN server, he might be logged by those carrying out six strikes. However, if that same user selected servers overseas, he would, be, he would not be monitored by six strikes. Um, equally, an Iranian or Chinese citizen looking to carry out activities frowned upon by his or her country uh, would be advised to use servers located outside their respective uh, countries. So a uh, little tip right here, a little information for you. Go check it out. I have a link up in the show notes for you at gncshownotes.com. All right, Apple's first quarter of negative income growth since 2003. Well, it ends this week. Investors might as well get ready for negative headlines. Fortune is saying the bad news is that every analyst that's been surveyed even the most bullish believes that for the first time in a decade, Apple reported that its income this quarter was lower than the same quarter before. According to the Thompson Financials, the consensus was that EPS for fiscal quarter 2, 2013 on Friday was $10.18 down from 12, 13, quarter 2. So uh, I tell you, they're making money. <laughs> you know, let's, let's think about this. The, re, the projected revenues are still 41 to $43 billion. That's how much they're going to make for a quarter. But these greedy, fat cat investors are so, they want more and more 
and more performance. You know, let's be straight up. I think the majority of companies in the United States or around the world would be pretty doggone happy with a 41 to $43 billion quarter of profit. They're making money, but all they can do is complain. You know, the stock took a huge hit already. And they're expecting this drop, so they reduced the, the, the price of the stock. It just amazes me that they reduce the price of a stock when they're still making 41 to $43 billion. It's just nuts. It really is. Hey, I want to say to hello to AC Man, Sly Fox. Welcome to the show in the chat room. Thanks for hanging out with us tonight. So it's just crazy. A bunch of whiners. 41 to $43 billion in profit, and, and, and they are, they're crying. Give me a break. It really just disgusts me. It really does. Uh, you know, I, I, we keep hearing about all this stuff on Prenda. And I mean, it's just this company, th these guys are so bizarre. It's, it's beyond words. I, I'm just going to have um, a link up in the show notes for another chapter in this saga. These folks have been, uh, basically, they've had a history of, of unusual class action clients. And, uh, excuse me, you know, while the copyright trolling business is on the ropes, these folks are plowing ahead in another area of practice, class action lawsuit, and they're filing all kinds of just weirdo class action lawsuits, in my opinion. And uh, it's just crazy. It just goes on and on. These guys, in my opinion, are the worst of the worst. And these are, these are the type of individuals that give lawyers a really bad rap. I know some really good lawyers that do a really good job with what they do. They're honorable, and they just, they don't, they don't do these, in my opinion, slime tactics. You know, I just, it's just incredible. It really, really is. You know, it just goes to prove that there's all kinds out there in this world. That's for sure. And, you know, and, and, Again, my comments about Prender are my own and my thoughts about them are, you know, it's just, uh, they just are disgusting, in my opinion. It really is crazy on what these guys do. But um, I'll, I'll let you guys come to your own opinion. I'll have this link up uh, uh, to Ars Technica on the article specifically. Um, these guys are going to have their day in court at some point, and this judge is gonna, just going to just, whew, can't wait. It's going to be fun to watch. Have you ever, um, when I was uh, doing um, some of my last college classes I actually, uh, for undergraduate degree, one of the things that I was, um, I had saved to the end was my math classes. <laughs> and, you know, I'd done all the, all the classes, but I had these measly 100 and 200 level math classes I had to get done. And I really didn't want to have to do them, but I, you know, just had to do them. So there's this new scientific study. It says learning can hurt your brain. And basically, have you ever, you know, studied something and it was so hard that you're like, ah, oh, my brain hurts? Well, apparently, this is this is the real deal. Um, after some folks published an especially challenging quantum mechanics article, the folks that read those complain that their heads hurt because you know you, you're trying to concentrate and understand what they really understand but they're saying it's actually possible that challenging your brain does a bit of physical damage to the nerve nerve cells of the brain researchers are reporting that following uh, situations where the brain is active you might find see signs of dna damage within the cells there the damage is normally restored quickly but the hypothesis is that the inability to repair it quickly enough may underline some neurological diseases. And this has started out as a study into Alzheimer's. So the, the researchers were working with mice that were genetically modified to mimic some of the mutations associated with early onset forms of the disease in humans. And as part of their testing, the teams based at UCSF looked for signs of DNA damage in the brains of these animals. And they generally found that the indications of damage went up when the brains of mice were active specifically after given a new environment to explore. 
but we've all done it. We were all like, oh, my head. And, you know, have you ever just like studied something and you're like, I got to set this down. I need to go lay down and, and rest my eyes for 10 minutes and take a break. And usually, you know, you kind of, ah, okay, let me get back at this. You know, you, but you know, your head just almost explodes. I've had that happen so many times. I wonder if that's a sign that uh, someday I'm, I'll be susceptible to Alzheimer's. That's the question. <laughs> um, so, you know, the question here, and then the question scientists are asking is why nerve cells end up picking DNA damage when you're doing what is effectively their job? Because you're flexing their muscles. <laughs> um, researchers uh, basically said that the brakes were repaired within a day. Um, and a number of studies have shown that uh, remaining mentally active helps protect you from the common form of mental decline that occurs with old age. And I believe that. You know, keeping your brain working and keeping you busy, doing hard, you know, doing solving hard problems helps. And, you know, there's some good studies out to prove that. So I guess even if it hurts your brain, it's good to do it. So stay mentally challenged, folks. Or after months of speculation, T-Mobile is finally, finally ditching cell phone contracts. And tomorrow, it looks like the iPhone is officially coming to T-Mobile. So the, the new plans at T-Mobile start at $50 a month for unlimited voice texting at a 500 meg plan. $60 gets you in at 2 gigs and higher. Uh, customers can bring their own devices or can pay an additional fee to buy a new phone, essentially shifting the carrier subsidy entirely to the consumer. For example, a new Galaxy S3 requires a purchase price of $110, but retails for $550 with an additional $16, fee, $16 fee for two years. So you, you basically pay $76 for a two gig plan for two years. Uh, so you're really, you're paying for that phone uh, pretty much um, with the additional fee. But uh, they're going to have month to month contracts uh, the, where you have to pay for the phone outright. But uh, it, uh, it appears it's killed off contracts completely. Um, so this is uh, going to be announced tomorrow. I'm going to tell you, prepaid is, is the way to go. Um, it really, really is. Um, it's, in my opinion, saving us a lot of money money in the way we're doing things here now with uh, three phones on uh, prepaid plans. And basically, where you just bought the phone outright and uh, you pay as you go. All right, man has been sentenced to a 30-month end prison sentence after lasering two aircraft in 2012 in October. Uh, 19-year-old Adam Gardenhire pled guilty to aiming laser point at a private aircraft and a police helicopter. Uh, the judge in California sentenced the defendant to 30 months in prison. So uh, they're not playing around with these folks. Um, this, is, uh, this is a fair warning out there that uh, they are going to throw people in jail for doing this. Of course, we know that there are commercially... Oh, your, your battery's low? Thank you for letting me know that. Over here beeping at me. Let me shut this phone off. Um, those green lasers um, are pretty dangerous, and they can impact someone's vision, and even at a distance. So uh, don't do it. And Because uh, if you do, and you get caught, you're going to jail. All right, I want to take care of our, our last sponsor tonight. I want to thank the folks over at, uh, at Dine.com. Uh, Dine's been with us here uh fast approaching three months i want you guys to uh, get faster internet you know you want your websites to load quicker and you want to make sure that if your dns goes down you have a secondary route to the uh to your website and this is where dyn.com dying.com comes in with outsourced dns you can make sure people can get to your website at all times with managed dns you can even connect items like your webcams or a dvr to a private channel and then you can pull from that at any time for business email delivery is critical if your business relies on the contact list of yours then dine's email solutions can get your messages to your clients and customers you can send secure email bulk email and set up high volume mailboxes right on dine's delivery service most important here and here's really where the where the rubber hits the road here um, we're in the middle of switching to ibv ipv6 and dine is ahead in that game and has complete support for IPv6. It's simple. Get faster internet by using Dyn 
for DNS. And that's really what it's all about here, using Dyn for DNS. And all you got to do is visit dyndyne.com forward slash podcast 30 and fill out the contact form and uh, or stop shopping right away and save 30% by using pro- promo code podcast 30 at checkout. Once again, visit dyne.com forward slash podcast 30. You can use that promo code, save 30% off on a purchase over at dyne.com. They got products for everyone at all levels, all different services. If you're a website uh, manager, you're going to want to switch over to Dyn.com and get the the power that's behind their DNS service. I want to thank Dyn.com for being a, a sponsor here at Geek News Central. Definitely check out all their products and services. Back to regular news. All right, Dig, uh, they made a blog post, put up a blog page. They put up a blog post today. Let's see if I can speak. Um. A few days ago, they announced that they were uh, pre-prioritizing their product roadmap for 2013 in order to build an RSS reader from scratch. Now, they had said that they'd planned to build something like this in the past, but what they've really done is they've decided to refocus, and they want to make the, basically, rebuild reader from scratch, and then basically make it so it was be a little more uh, discoverable, lots of more information available. Um, they're saying Google did a lot of things right with its reader, but based on what they're hearing from you, their users, there's room for meaningful improvement. They say they want to build a product that's clean and flexible, that bends easily and intuitively to the needs of different users. They want to experiment with an add value to the source of information that are increasingly important but difficult to surface and organize in most reader appliances like Twitter, Facebook, Tumblr, Reddit, LinkedIn, or Hacker News. We likely won't get everything we want in, in version one, but, but but we believe it's worth exploring. So I think this is kind of cool if they can actually dig this stuff out that we're looking for out of those sites, out of Twitter, out of Facebook, out of Tumblr, out of Reddit, out of LinkedIn, out of Hacker News. I think think what we're going to get here is a pretty good product. So we'll see where this goes, but uh, they've thrown in. So it looks like we got two good contenders here to be the new replacement to Google Reader. Uh, Dig may be onto something here. We'll see where they go with this, but I think Feedly's got a little head start on them, so only time will tell. Um, you know, space garbage is an issue. And there's been lots of discussions on different ways to potentially deorbit dead satellites or basically get rid of some of this space junk. But uh, in the latest edition of the Journal and S- Journal of Spacecraft and Rockets, they're saying that satellites that simply go defunct are generally left to decay and fall to Earth in potentially lethal places, or worse, collide with functioning satellites. These are unnecessary risks that basically say they say when we could be using devices like the inflatable drag inducing balloons and electromagnetic tethers at our disposal. So basically the researchers are describing and recommending ways um, to basically get decommissioned sa- uh, satellites out of orbit and away from their functional brethren. Um, so basically they are saying we need to start employing these methods. We need to, uh, figure out a way to safely in, uh, board them on the aircraft or on the, on, the, on the vehicles, and then when it's time, deploy them so that the uh, spacecraft can be uh, deorbited. So um, we'll see how this plays out. But I think it's smart. You know, we got a lot of junk up there. It's time to uh, to clean house a little bit. All right, Boeing flight test redesigned battery for 787. Boeing conducted a test flight of its 787 Dreamliner today, analyzed how the aircraft's redesigned battery system performed in the air. The two-hour test flight, which departed Payne Field in Everett, Washington, around noon, is the first step in confirming the system performed its design, allowing the grounded aircraft to return to service. Uh, The crew of six on board during the flight performed a variety of tests uh, from a normal flight profile, including cycling the landing gear and operating the backup systems. The test was conducted on a production airplane, built for uh, LLT, Polish Airlines, and went according to plan. So uh, we'll see where this goes, if this gets them any closer to getting the aircraft uh, back in the air. 
costing those owners a lot of money just sitting in the sidelines. Or, okay, I can't trade my clearinghouse to launch on Tuesday with all these new dot whatever's coming on board. They got a way to handle it, so I can is launching their new trademark clearinghouse that made the news today. Not too much more details on that. Uh, good news: Japan has discovered large quantity of rare earth minerals and hopes to break China's chokehold on supply. And, you know, rare earth stuff is really important, and um, basically they have found uh, the mother load of a, a deposit of rare earth is estimated at 6.8 million metric tons, sitting a little over three and a half miles under the ocean. So they got to figure a way to dig it out. But uh, this is uh, this is very important for this rare earth ore that is needed in, in most modern electronics. So uh, we'll see where this leads the Japanese and could uh, help uh, alleviate some of the challenges that have been going on with the Chinese dominating this uh, area. Researchers have created a fiber optic network that operates at 99.7% speed of light. Now, folks, this is big. It's a big, big change. You know, normal fiber optic, uh, basically it runs at about 31%. The speed of light for them to operate at 99.7% is huge. And uh, there's a great article about this on uh, Extreme Tech. I have a link up in the show notes. But uh, this, is a, this is a big, big breakthrough. Hey, Curiosity is out of safe mode. It's doing science again. Uh, they're running on the uh, spare computer, the backup computer. And uh, the A computer is ready for full duty. But one thing they've been able to do is the B computer has been hardwired to a bunch of cameras that uh, have not been able to be utilized. And we're getting some new cool pictures from the cameras that were used only in the descent stage. So uh, we'll see what happens here. But they've got some other things going on over the couple of weeks Apparently, there's some alignment going on where Mars and the Sun and the Earth, and it's uh, they're worried about communication, so they're not going to be telling the rover to do too much over the next couple of weeks, but they are back up and uh, in operational doing science. Have you ever heard a song and basically it stuck and you couldn't get it out of your head? Well, scientists have found a way to help anyone plagued by those annoying tunes that lodge themselves inside our heads and repeat on an endless loop. And I haven't, luckily, knock on wood, I haven't had one of those happen in a long time. And I know it happens, it happened to me when I was younger, but not so much anymore. But they're saying when snippets of a catchy song inexplicably play a broken record in your brain, the solution to it can be to give your brain some tricky, basically, um, what they call anagrams, um, basically doing some puzzles. And it basically forces the intrusive music out of your working memory. Um, so that's pretty cool. And it's basically the key is to find something that will give you the right level of challenge. Um, so if you're cognitive engaged, it's basically limits the ability of the intrusive song to enter your head. And uh, the problem they say is called involuntary memory retrieval. It's something that we can do automatically like driving or walking it means that you're not using all your cognitive resources. So that's why you get in this jukebox replay mode. And uh, so it's pretty cool. And uh, that they just basically say you want to, you know, make your brain work uh, by doing some like some tricky anagrams to force that uh, broken record out of your brain. Thank goodness I haven't had one of those happen in a while. All right. Direct to vinyl recording makes a comeback for many decades. Vinyl was in, man. So you know, they're basically made by uh, cutting grooves directly into the disc and then making a mold from that as a master and pressing records. So uh, the folks at South by Southwest were, uh, were cutting some records at, and basically is a company called VinylRecording.com and they were demonstrating their vinyl recording system, which is sort of a gramophone record equivalent of print on demand. And uh, so pretty cool. Uh, but if you, uh, if you want to, make some vinyl there's a way to do it link is will be up in the show notes all right we haven't talked a lot about the cispa but one of the key complaints of cispa is the fact that it does absolutely nothing to make sure any of your data is shared with the government by basically does nothing and let me repeat this to make sure any of the data of yours that is shared with the government by third parties is sent 
to folks working to protect us from cybersecurity uh, threats. Instead, the information can be shared with any agency of the government so long as they can claim vaguely that it's being used for cybersecurity. So the EFF is pointing out, without any limitations on who in the government can see your data, every government agency can see your data. They've even put together a pretty impressive list. So let me just give you a couple of companies that can request your information underneath the CISPA. Council of Economic Advisor, National Security Council, Office of Intergovernmental Affairs and Public Engagement, Office of the Second Children, Office of the Second Lady, Office of the Vice President, Office of the First Children, Office of the First Lady, Office of the President, um, Farm Services Agency, National Institute of Food and Agriculture, Office of Rural Development, Import Administration, Market Access and Compliance, National Institute of Standards and Technology, Department of the Army, Navy, Marines, Office of ONI, National uh, Geospatial Intelligence Agency, uh, Federal, uh, Federal Student Aid, Office of Civil Rights, Office of Special Education Rehabilitative Services, Rehabilitation Services Administration, Special Institutions, American Printing House for the Blind, and so forth. These are all agencies that can request your data under the CISPA. So um, I'm sure that the Office of the, uh, um, of the Second Child... <laughs> is going to request our information. But technically, underneath the CISPA, they could. So it makes you go, hmm. So they can share, share your information. The copyright lobby is saying the public has no place in policy discussions. We, we're not, none of us have any right to talk about what's going on with copyright policy. You know, who do these people think they are? Last time I checked... You know, we had a right to due process in our government processes and allowed to make statements, written statements, submit to the record and so forth. And in policy making, you know, I find it pretty incredible that the copyright lobby is saying the public has no place in policy discussions. What do you guys think about that? Love to hear your feedback. Geeknews at gmail.com. Voicemail hotline 619-342-7365. All right, there's been a petition submitted to require Congress to wear the logos of their corporate donors. I think this is good. You guys uh, watching NASCAR or Indy? Hey, by the way, I did go to the Indy International Speedway. Indianapolis International Speedway was able to go on the track. Didn't kiss the bricks, but uh, kneeled down the bricks and got a picture. Uh, went there with my mom, hung out. We had a great time at uh, doing the tour, seeing the cars. Um, spent uh, two or three hours there. Had a great time. If you ever get a chance to go to uh, Indianapolis, definitely go visit the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and uh, go on a day that they're giving track tours. It's absolutely fantastic. $25 a person, best $25 you're going to spend for uh, uh, for a couple of hours of fun at uh, in Indianapolis. You got to go in the press room, the media room. And you got to go, boy, just about everywhere that you would have never got to gone to while you're, you know, if a race was going on. You got to go to the VIP room, $65,000 for an event. Not bad. <laughs> so uh, they were very forthcoming in the prices of everything. It was kind of interesting to, to learn. So anyway, um, that's what we did in India. I almost forgot to tell you guys about that. But anyway, wearing these corporate logos, don't you think it'd be cool when they, 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 uh, congressmen showed up to, um, to uh, the session of Congress? He put on his jacket and on his jacket was uh, all the corporate sponsors, um, all of the uh, the lobbyists, lobbyist organizations, all of the companies. Um, so you'd have Ford, you would have uh, NRA, you would have uh, um, the MPAA, the RIAA, the you know uh, such and such PAC, and such and such. You know all those logos. They probably would have to have like. Um, you know, the, the special interest groups, they would probably have to wear jackets that went all the way to their ankles and were basically layered because there would be so many groups that, that basically donate to, to congressmen's uh, re-election. Uh, I think they ought to have a um, have this these logos on their uh, on their uh, on their coats. So they, there's been a, um, a petition at We the People requesting that Congress members switch over to a NASCAR style representation 
to wear their affections literally on their sleeves. So I think this is kind of cool. And, um, you know, I think they should be able to do that. And, of course, if you uh, come in logo free, uh, you know, you'd know that uh, just a general citizen had donated their campaign and not a corporate organization. Um, I don't think that this will ever happen, but it's kind of an interesting thought, huh? If congressmen had to wear their affiliations on their uh, on their on their sleeves or on their coats, all right. Is HBO Go is HBO Go leaving its TV subscription confines? Well, there's some rumors on the street that soon you may not have to be an HBO subscriber in order to get HBO Go. Now, HBO has remained a stumbling block for potential cord cutters everywhere. And, uh, you know, you have to be an HBO subscriber to get HBO Go. But um, basically, they're saying HBO could partner with a broadband provider to eliminate the TV portion of the bill while simply adding a small fee for a monthly subscription to the app, potentially saving customers as much as 100 bucks a month. 100 bucks a month? So uh, we'll see where this leads. But HBO may be exploring the full digital world. Great article by Alan at Geek News Central. Lots of tweets on that one too, 63 tweets. All right, this, uh, this is a fun article from Gizmodo. And let me see how we're doing on time. Yeah, we're doing okay. Um, this When you watch this video, your brain's kind of going to explode. And I'm just going to have you watch it. And watch it close, and when, after you watch it, come back and tell me whether or not you are a little bit confused. Link will be up in the show notes. So basically what it is, it's a tile board. And uh, it's a form of uh, Portuguese artwork that involves tile work, and your brain is definitely going to lose some gray matter on this one. After you watch it, you're going to go, how did that happen? Again, I think I reported earlier, but T-Mobile is finally getting the iPhone tomorrow. So uh, if you're a T-Mobile fan, that is uh, going to be potential. If you've been using the New York Times uh, paywall bypassing app, um, they've closed that down. So basically a popular trick that people were using uh, called NY Clean to get around the New York Times article limit no longer works. Development coincides with the Times' ongoing effort to shut down loopholes around its digital subscription. So uh, NY Clean will no longer work to get to the New York Times. You want to re read it? Going to have to pay for it. Andrew Sutherland at The Dish has rolled out a $1.99 a month payment option for The Dish. So they basically have uh, rolled out a user-supported, uh, an, an additional level of user support, which is kind of cool at 2 bucks a month. $1.99. Hey, sounds like a popular number, right? Support Geek News Central by becoming an insider at $2 a month. Hey, Apple is um, acquired a company called Wi-Fi Slam. And the fate of the acquired state up is, is not certain here. But this small Silicon Valley indoor location company called Wi-Fi Slam could lead to Apple implementing um, their technology to track us when we're inside. So this basically Wi-Fi slam would allow your smartphone to pinpoint its location and the location of your friends in real time to a 2.5 meter accuracy, accuracy using only ambient Wi-Fi signals that are already present in buildings. So this is kind of going, hmm, so Apple's really going to track us now. Um, maps, passbook, find my friends, reminders, and so forth, it, I'm sure would come in handy if they could track us indoors. So I'll have the link up that in the show notes. Hey, Dave Weiner today announced um, something called Little Outliner. And I don't know, Dave has got this uh, just infatuation with outliners. And I, I'm, you know, outliners are good for preparing a, uh, uh, to write a book. But this is kind of an interesting, let me see if I can blow this thing up. This is using HTML5. And I have the link up in the show notes, but it says Little Outliner is a powerful and easy editor that automatically saves text locally, a new feature in HTML5. So I have the link up in the show notes for you to check it out. If you've used an outliner before, or use one of Dave's outliners, definitely uh, give it a run. But it's kind of an interesting 
project he's got going here. And I really don't understand, I, you know, it's, it's like, Dave, come on, move on, go to something new, you know, but uh, he's he's basically got a, um, a small company or basically a, a group that's basically, um, he's releasing tools at smallpicture.com. And it's just a fun little project that he's working on. And he's done a, a, a number of things already. And uh, again, smallpicture.com is the place. And they're going to be uh, releasing stuff every week, um, as they say, to you know, different little projects that they're working on. So last article today, Quiet RSS, a clean and effective standalone RSS reader. So you're looking for an option from uh, Google Reader. Quiet, qu excuse me, Quiet RSS, not Quiet. Quiet, Q-U-I-T-E. RSS is a clean and effective standalone RSS reader according to makeuseof.com. All right, let me go ahead and load the email here and get into that. We had no voicemails come in. And, but I want to remind you that you can always call into the hotline at 619-342-7365. And what did we have here in, today is the 25th. How is that possible? I know we had some comments come in. What's going on? Is Google not loading the stack? Yeah, something's going on. I'm not connecting to Google right now. Um, okay, well, it is what it is. So, again, email me here, geeknews at gmail.com, geeknews at gmail.com. Tweet me at geeknews. Of course, you can call the hotline at 619-342-7365 and leave your thoughts and comments about the show. And again, I want you to make sure that you get over to geeknewscentral.com, visit the website, get signed up for the show, and uh, definitely check out the new media show that we've just renamed from uh, the Morning Tech Show or Saturday Morning Tech. And uh, of course, support our sponsors as well. We appreciate it. We thank all of you for being here. Thanks for watching. We'll be back with you on Thursday in a regular scheduled show here in Honolulu. It looks like I'll probably be in Hawaii until... Um, I head out to NAB. It does look like I am going to go ahead and make the jump and head out to uh, to NAB. So look forward to uh, being able to do that. And uh, um, we'll keep you advised of everything going on. But everyone, thanks for being here. We'll see you next time. Oops, let me come back to the main page. We'll take see you next time. Everyone take care and aloha.